Hello and welcome to video number three. Uh, today I'm Mr. Mullen and I'm going to be talking about percentages. And a little later on, Mr. Saji is going to be back to talk about percent increase and decrease. So let's start to talk about percents. A percent is a ratio. And to find a percentage, we need the part over the whole. It's maybe best to explain this in an example. So in our class, let's say there are four boys. And let's say there are six girls. They all have the same haircut. And if I want to find out what percent are girls. I have to use my relationship here to find the percentage. Part. What part are girls? So percentage equals the part that are girls. Well, I have one, two, three, four, five, six girls. And the whole, right? Well, how many students do I have total? Well, I have six girls, four boys, that's ten total. I can use a little bit of divisibility here, or the top and the bottom, by two. I get three in the top, five in the bottom. Now, you're probably thinking, Mr. Mullen, when I see percentages in the store, or if I see percentages out in the real world, I don't see three over five. And you're right. But what we need to do to get the percentages to be the percentages we're accustomed to, we need to use division. So three-fifths, when we're using division, would be five into three. You've got to think back to elementary school here. Five can't go into three, but if I add a decimal point, I can make it 30. Five goes into 30. Six times. Point six. Mr. Mullen, it still doesn't look like the percentages that I'm accustomed to. Well, at this point, though, we have, so this is the girls' percentage, is equal to point six. Point six can be written as point six zero. And when we're looking for the percentages as we're accustomed to them, we have to move the decimal point two positions. So my starting point was here. I moved once, I moved twice, and I get 60%. Let's try one more of this type. What percentage are boys? Okay. Again, percentage is still part divided by whole, right? But I have to ask myself, it's not the part that are girls now, it's the part that are boys. And there are four boys. My whole has not changed at all. My whole is still 10. Using a little divisibility, I have 2 over 5, and again, I have to use division. 5 into 2. 5 doesn't go into 2, I add a decimal point, add a 0, 5 goes into 24 times. And now, I'm over here, my answer was 0.4 which can be written as 0 .40. Here's my decimal point, 1, 2, 3, 
to 40%. So I just want to point out something here. The girls were 60%, the boys were 40%. That's 100% because boys and girls are the two categories that account for all the people in this class. What I'd like to do next is I'd like to propose questions as you'll see them on Summit or the SAT or NWEA. So one way that you'll see these questions posed are like this. What percentage of 160 is 40? So it's at this point where we have to use our relationship here, our ratio. And we just need to know what's the percentage, what's the part, what's the whole. So whatever you're taking the percentage of is going to be the whole, right? We take a percentage of a, of a total to get a part. So right away, I know I'm missing the percentage, so why don't we make that x? And then here, I know that the whole is 160 and the part is 40. So my part goes in the top, my whole goes in the bottom, and now we're just talking about a division problem. Typically on the SAT and on NWEA, you won't be allowed to use a calculator, but in real life, you could, and you could simply do 40 divided by 160, and you would get an answer in your calculator. But in those situations, in testing situations, you need to understand what you're looking at. And what we're looking at here is 160 into 40. Well, 160 doesn't go into 40. So I have to add a decimal point and a zero. Now, whenever you're dealing with large numbers in division, you want to exclude the zeros they have in common. So you want to think, how many times does 16 go into 40? Well, I know 16 times 2 is going to be 10 plus 10, 6 plus 6, right? 10 and 10 is 20, 6 plus 6 is 12, and six, so 16 times 2 is 32. I'm not going to get another 16 before 40, so I know that it's 2. So 2 times 16, like we said, was 32. And now I can bring that 0 back in. Thirty-two, I need 8 to get to 40. So and then 0. And again, I have to bring down that 0 if you remember from elementary school. At the long division. So now again, I'm dealing with 16 and 80 because I can exclude those zeros they have in common. Well, if I think about this for a second, 5 times 10 is going to be 50, and 5 times 6 is going to be 30. 50 and 30 is 80, so 160 goes in to 800. And I know it goes in. So 0.25, now we have to think, and uh, over time, hopefully, this decimal to percentage conversion will be a natural thing. But I look at this and I say, oh, 0.25, so again, here's my, here's my decimal point, and I'm going to move it one, twice, and I get 25%. Okay. Let's try another example. What they'll do in testing situations is sometimes they'll take another part out of the equation. So they might say to you, 20% of $500 is what? So we still use our relationships here. We still use this percentage equals part of a whole. 
but I have to distinguish what the part is, what the whole is, and what the percentage is. So I can see right away that I have 20%. I know that whatever I'm taking the percentage of is going to be my whole. So I know $500 is my whole. And I know that I'm missing my part. So some number divided by 500 is 20%. So let's use algebra to figure out what we're missing. So the opposite of divide by 500 is to multiply by 500 on both sides. These are going to cancel out. And I'm left with 500 times 20% can be rewritten as 0.2 equals x. Now let's think back to video 1 in our multiplication, right? Well, 500, if I'm thinking about it in terms of just hundreds, right? 2 times 500 is going to be 1,000. However, I have one decimal point. So if you think back to mental math strategies, right? One decimal point, one decimal point. So this last zero is going to go away. And I'm left with 100. So 20% <coughs> of 500 is 100. 30% <coughs> 30% of what number is 30? Thirty percent of what number is thirty? Well, I know we have to use this relationship here. Percent is part of all. And I know that thirty percent is the percent. Thirty percent of a whole of what number? I don't know what the whole is. Thirty percent of the whole is the part. The part is thirty. So the tricky part about this is when we have the variable in the denominator. What we have to do first is we have to move the x to the other side. And to do that, I would multiply by x on both sides. And when I and so x divided by x cancels out. And what I'm left with here, and I'm going to rewrite 30% as 0.3. 0.3x equals 30. Okay, well, what's the opposite of times 0.3? Divide by 0.3. These 0.3s are going to cancel out, and I'm left with x equals 30 divided by 0.3. Well, let's write this out in division. So I have 0.3 going into 30. Whenever I have a decimal point on the outside, that's something you should look to fix right away. So if the decimal point's here, and I move it once over here, so if it starts here and I'm moving it once here, I moved it one spot. You should move it one spot here. So if it started here, one spot here, and you add a zero. So I, I need to go, how many times does three go into 300? Well, how many? How many hundreds are in 300? There are three one hundreds in 300. Therefore, my answer is 100. So, 30% of 100 is 30. So, I know percentages can get confusing, but if you need help on any of the topics we looked at today, uh, contact Mr. Saji or myself in office hours and we'll help you through it. Go. Hello, this is Saji again. We're just going to learn today percent increase. You already learned from Mr. Ryan about percentages and how to calculate percent. Now we're going to see how percent increase. First of all, we need to know whole is equal to 
hundred percent. For an example, if I say you got every hundred percent correct in your exam, that means entire the whole exam you did it correct. If I say I eat hundred percent of one pizza, that means I ate one whole pizza. All right. So now. If the full is 100%, the whole is 100%, just say 30%. What does that mean? Like Mr. Ryan said, it's partial of a whole. So you eat a portion of it. Again, for an example, if someone get 30% of their exam correct, that means they got partial correct. 30% of the full 100% they got correct. Alright? Now, that we can say which is 30 over 100 because the whole is 100% out of whole you only got 30%. Alright? This is just a fraction for percentage. 30% is equal to 30 over 100. How do we change into decimal? You just can go divide it or put in the calculator or if you do by hand also you can do it. 30 divided by 100. Mr. Moore was teaching what you need to do. 100 cannot go into 30 so you just have to put a decimal and add a zero. If you add this one going to look like look 300. So how many hundred in 300? Which is 3. 3 times 100 you can do one at a time. 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 1 is 3. And you subtract it. You end up with 0. So that's me in decimal it's 0.3. Let's say if I say 110%, what does that mean? That means we still, the whole is 100, whatever we got, that's what we're going to put on the top, which is 110 divided by 100. What is it equal to? Same thing. You can divide it, which is 110 divided by 100. How many 100 in 110? 1. 1 times 100? It's 100. What is left? When you subtract it, it's going to be left with 10. How many 100's in 10? We can't take 100 from 10. So we're just going to put a decimal, add a 0. Now how many 100's in 100? 1. So 1 times 100? Which is 100, you just subtract it, send it with 0. So the answer is 1.10. The simple way, if there's a percent, whatever the number you have in percent, just move to a digit. Mr. Mullen said it. So if you move it, it's going to be the decimal going to come right front of 3. Even you can add as many 0, 1, it's going to be the same thing, 0 0.3. All right? Same thing, we have 110. You just move two decimal points, it's going to be 1.10. Let's say if someone said 2%, how do we write that in fraction? We know the entire, the whole is 100. Out of 100, how many percent? Which is 2. So 2 over 100. How do we convert into 100? I mean, in decimal, easy. You have 2 point, I mean 2 point. You're going to move 2 decimal away. The easy trick. When we move, we have nothing, so we're just going to put and move the decimal over here. Now, the answer is 0 0.02. If you want to divide it, it's, you're going to get the same answer, but this is easy 
and faster for SAT, I highly recommend you to do it this way so you can do it quick. 2 divided by 100. Can 100 go, goes into 2? No, so we're just going to put a decimal and add 0. Can 100 go into 20? No, so we're going to add a 0 and add a 0 over here. Now, how many hundreds in 200? It is 2. 2 times 100 is 200. When you subtract that, you end up with 0. So the answer is 0 0.02. Let's look at this question. A handbag is originally $50. I'm just going to underline all these data. Now it's 20% off. I'm just going to underline the off part too. The question is, how much is it now? So, I can say $50 is 100%. Everybody agree? Now, in here saying we have 20% off. So, we're just going to subtract from 100% minus 20% which is equal to 80% now what do we need to do we take the original price 50 times 80% if you can use the calculator you can just put right away 50 times 80 percent if not this is the best way to do it if you want to do it in your hand 50 times we know we previously said whatever the percent over the whole which is 100 percent so which is 80 divided by 100 which is equal to You can do the math if when you divide it right over here, you can cancel those two zeros. And we have one zero on the top is multiplying. So you can cancel these two zeros too. If it's a positive or negative sign, you cannot do it. So in here, it's a multiplying sign. So we're just going to cancel these two zeros. So now we end up with 5 times 8 is 40 on the bottom is 1 40 divided by 1 is 40 so the original I mean the sale price is going to be $40 let's see another example a popular sneaker will marked up 40% I'm just going to underline that the original price was $180 the original price now they are asking how much do the sneakers cost now all right so we know they marked up 40 percent so the original price which is 100 percent and it's marked up 40 percent if it's marked down you subtract if it's marked up you're going to add that 40%. So basically, from the original price, it's 100, if it's 100%, now it's going to be 140%. So we know $180, the original price, times, what is the percentage now? It's going to be 140% because they mark up by 40% out of 100. Now, same thing, like we did last time. There's a zero on the top, zero on the bottom. We cancel. The last zero, you don't cancel if any zeros in between two numbers. All right? And we have the last digit is zero, and also it's multiplying, so we can cancel the top and bottom. If it's positive or negative, you cannot cancel. So now, 18 times 14. 
18 times 14. On the bottom, it's going to be 1. Let's see how do we multiply. 18 times 14. Anybody? Easy way to do the simple way if you want to do it multiply by from left, I mean right to left. So this is 4, so we're going to start to multiply by 4. 4 times 8, 32. We have 2, 3 left. 4 times 1 is 4, plus that 3, it's going to be 7. Now we are multiplying by 1. When we multiply, I always put a little line. We're going to move one digit over. So 1 times 8 is going to be 8. And 1 times 1, it's 1. We add these two. If you want to put 0, you can put 0. 2 plus 0 is 2. 8 plus 7, 7 plus 8, it's going to be 15. So I'm just going to write 5. So the 1 carry on over here. 1 plus 1, 2. 252. So the answer is 200. $52. Here's another example. In some time, they will give you either increase amount or the decreasing amount, and they will ask what percent increased or decrease. So this is we have to find the percentage. So let's see the question first. The computer was $360. I am going to underline or mark that. The computer was $360, now it is $240, that means the price was decreased. So, we can figure out how many dollars it's decreased, but the question is, what is the percentage? What is the percent decrease? So, we had to find the percent decrease. First thing, we will find out how many dollars it's went down. So we're going to take the original price, which is 360 minus 240, which is equal to 120. So now we know the decreasing price was 120 amount. Decreasing amount is 120. And also we know the initial price which is the whole price, which is 360. So now, what we need to do to find out how many percent increase, we take the difference, which is 120, divided by the whole, which is 100%, which is 360. I'm just going to divide it by 360, which is equal to, again, like last time we did, if you see the zeros at the end, top and bottom, we cancel this out. We end up with 12 divided by 36. Can we divide top and bottom by any numbers? Of course, it can be divided by 12. Top and bottom. How many 12s in on the top? 1. So I'm just going to put 1. How many 12s in 36? Again, multiplication table is very important. If you Know that 3 times 12 goes into 36, so it's 3. So now, what is the percentage? Now we're going to take the 1 and divide it by 3. How many 3's in 1? 0, I put a decimal, and I put the decimal, I add a 0. Now, how many 3's in 10? 3. 3 times 3 is 9. You subtract it, you're going to end up with 1. Now, you're going to add a 0. How many 3's in 3? I mean, 3's in 10, which is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Subtract it, you're going to end up with 1. Other than the 0, how many 3's in 10? Another 3. When you look at it, it's going to continue. So, 
Now I can say it's 0.333 increasing. In percentage, if you want to round this, it's pretty fine to two digit. If you round it, it's going to be 0 0.33, which is in percentage, like Mr. Mullen said, you're going to move the decimal two digit on the right. If you move it, that's going to be 33 percentage, the percent sign. So, what is the percent decrease? It's 33 percent decrease. Again, if you have any questions or any concern, or if you want me to explain to you again, please feel free to stop by at my office hours. Thank you.